In this section, we're going to be talking about triple integrals in rectangular coordinates. Triple integrals are used to calculate volumes of three-dimensional shapes, so volumes of regions in space. They can also be used to find the average value of a function over a three-dimensional region. When it comes to partitioning the region over which we're integrating, because it's a three-dimensional region, we are going to partition it using rectangular boxes or rectangular prisms. Now for double integrals, when we partitioned the region that we're integrating over, it was into rectangular pieces, so something with a length and a width. Now when we partition our region D here in space, we'll have a three-dimensional partition piece, so it's like a box or a rectangular prism, so each um, unit of our partition has a length, a width, and now a height as well. So by definition, the volume of a closed bounded region, D in space, is the triple integral um, over this region. Notice that there is no function value, or technically the function value is 1. So we're integrating over three-dimensional region of the function equal to 1. There's an invisible 1 right in between here, the integral in dV. For finding the limits of integration, we're going to use the order dz, dy, dx, so integrating with respect to z first, then y, and then last x. Step number one would be to draw your region, d, that you're integrating over, but also its shadow. You can think of it as a shadow of the region, r, and this shadow is going to be in the xy plane. So you're drawing a three-dimensional region and also its two-dimensional shadow. And then you want to label all of the boundaries of your three-dimensional region as well as the um, two-dimensional region R. Step number two, to find the z-limits of integration, you're going to draw a line going through the region D. And this line is going to be parallel to the z-axis. You'll start the line at a point x, comma y in your region R. So you're starting at the, a point in the shadow and you're moving your way through your three-dimensional region. Step three would be to find the y limits of integration. So this steps three and four are what you've done with two um, double integrals. So you draw a line through your two dimensional region R and you draw this parallel to the y axis. You wanna go in the direction that y increases and just identify where your line through your region, where it enters and where it exits that region. Then last, we'll find the x limits of integration. Okay, so our triple integral, first with respect to z, we have a, um, the limits of integration are a function of x and y. Then moving outward, we have our integral with respect to y, the limits of integration are in terms of x, and then lastly, our integral with respect to x has constant limits of integration. So let's try this example. We're going to set up the triple integral. S is a sphere of radius 5, it's centered at the origin, and then D is a region under the sphere but above a plane z equals 3. Okay, so here's a visual of our image um, of the region that we're going to be integrating over. So the darker part, it's like this cap of this region, this is D. It's above the plane z equals 3 and then below the sphere. The top surface, you notice this actually right here is the equation of a sphere, of radius 5. So the top boundary, if you solve for z, notice where you exit your region at. You're, if you're going from a point in the shadow, underneath here, notice r is this shadow. If you draw a line from the shadow upwards through your region, it exits at the sphere but you solve the sphere equation for z. So you just solve this equation for the surface in terms of z. Now you enter this region at the plane, the bottom boundary, at the plane z equals 3. Okay? So these are going to be our z limits of integration, from 3 to the square root of 25 minus x squared minus y squared. Now for our y limits of integration, we're looking at the shadow of our three-dimensional region in the xy plane. What we know about this shadow 
is that it's going to be the projection of our region, our three-dimensional region onto the xy plane. So we know that z was equal to 3, and then the top of the sphere was, in terms of z, was z was equal to this square root. So if we set them equal to each other and solve, we figure out that the equation of the shadow is the circle x squared plus y squared is 16. So then drawing a line parallel to the y-axis through our region R, it enters at the circle, the bottom half of the circle, and exits the top half. So if we solve for y, we know that y is bounded between the negative square root of the circle and the positive um, square root, 16 minus x squared. Now lastly, for the limits of integration in terms of x, we look at the view of our region Imagine staring down the x-axis here. So we're looking at the yz plane. And if we form a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out that this is going to be um, 4 and negative 4 for our boundaries. Now you can actually just figure that out from the previous visual that we came up with, our circle with radius 4. But we could also use Pythagorean theorem because we knew that the radius of the sphere was 5 and we know that um, the height that we were going up for our, our right triangle here was 3. So x is bounded between negative 4 and 4. Then our triple integral has this format. So we integrate with respect to z first, lower and upper boundaries for z, then with respect to y, lower and upper limits, and lastly with respect to x with these constant limits. Let's take a look at another example. So we're going to be finding the volume of a region enclosed by two surfaces. Because we're finding the volume, we're ultimately integrating the function equal to 1 over this three-dimensional region. So here's our region. It's bounded by two surfaces. So we have an upper surface of 8 minus x squared minus y squared. And then this lower surface is x squared plus 3y squared. Now to find this intersection curve, you set the two functions equal to each other. And if we solve, we actually get this elliptical um, cylinder, x squared plus 2y squared equals 4. So if you notice the projection, the shadow down into the xy plane, it is an ellipse. And it's the ellipse with the same equation. So we know some things. We know that the region, the surfaces intersect at the point negative 2, 0, 4 and 2, 0, 4, just based on plugging in um, y equals 0 and solving for x, we can find those two points. Okay, so now for our y limits of integration, we enter our region through this line going parallel up through the surface, parallel to the z-axis, and it's at the bottom boundary, the bottom curve, um, bottom surface. So x squared plus 3y squared is our lower limit of integration for z, and then the upper limit of integration for z is where we exit our region through this red line, um, so it's the top surface. Now for y, our boundaries for y, we enter into our shadow here, our region R, two-dimensional region, at the ellipse. So we solve the equation, this equation for, of the ellipse, we solve for y. And so it's negative of this square root. And then we exit at y equals positive of the square root. And then last, to find the region, um, the limits of integration for x, we're going to cover all of the region r, all the x values that r covers. And so that's starting from x is negative 2. If we just kind of notice, we already found that point earlier, and it just projected down into the xy plane. And then we exit at positive 2. Okay, so now setting up our triple integral, we just put all of our limits of integration on, and then notice there's an invisible one for our function here that we're going to that we integrate. So for the last example, if you continued and integrated over the um, region D, you would have ended up with a volume of eight square root two times pi. Lastly. We can use triple integrals to find average value of a function. So the function might represent distance, it might represent temperature, and so this um, average value would give you the average of those, like average temperature, average distance. So what you end up doing is evaluating your triple integral of your function and then dividing by the volume of the region. 
Now, depending on the region or space D that you're integrating over, the volume could be possibly found easily without triple integration, but sometimes you might have to perform the triple integration just to get the volume. That's what we did in the last example. So let's say you have a nice shape like a cylinder here. We can find the volume without integration. We know we have formulas for this, so it would just be 2 pi r squared times the height. So you would just find that value and then divide your triple integral value over of your function over um, the region by this number. If the volume is not easily found, then it would be just like our last example, and you would set up a triple integral, and your function would be 1, and you would evaluate this triple integral first to get the volume, and then you would evaluate the triple integral over the given function, or of the given function, and then divide that answer by the answer uh, by the volume that you got in the previous triple integration. Okay, that's it.